Welcome back to Keep Idaho Red Radio with Tom Luna and Vic Miller. And uh, Vic, we're talking about the election and the results of it and what we can anticipate going forward. That's what this whole show's about. In fact, we'll probably be talking about this for the next few shows. But today, we're uh, in, in this uh, uh, segment, we're going to be talking to Senate Pro Tem uh, Chuck Winder, just reelected. Uh, and uh, Senator, uh, people know your bio. They know your history. So let's just jump right in. You, you're going to have a new Senate. There always is new members, but this is kind of a bigger year, a lot of new members. So talk to us about the makeup of the Senate compared to where it is today and, and, and going forward. Every time we have a new census and reapportionment, uh, we have uh, new members come into the legislature. Uh, this was an unusual year because we, uh, I think, have the most uh, new senators, uh, at least that I can remember, uh, ever coming in at one time. Uh, we've got uh, roughly half of our people uh, retired or didn't uh, run for office. and uh, There were four or five that uh, lost their primary, and, and we have a group of new people coming in. I've talked with all of them, and uh, they're all, I think, going to be thoughtful people. They're going to be passionate about their issues. They're uh, quite conservative in most cases, but uh, I honestly believe uh, having talked to them and and talking to others that uh, we're going to re get a really good uh, majority of our caucus that's going to come and work as legislators and be reasonable and thoughtful. Senator, one of the things that uh, people may not know is that a lot of the assignments to committees and leadership uh, of, of chairman and uh, of committees has a lot to do with seniority in the Senate. So um, kind of curious how that works out when you have so many uh, new freshmen. Well, the way it works is the senators that have served time uh, in the Senate uh, get the highest uh, priority in their selections. Um, then uh, from there, we look at people that have served in the House. Uh, we do give them credit for that service. And then and anybody that comes in brand new that's never served in either the House or the Senate, uh, they basically get their names put in a hat and will be drawn out. And this year, it's going to be... Uh, probably about 10, uh, 10 people uh, that uh, will have to be drawn out of the hat because uh, they have no seniority. We're talking with uh, Senate Pro Tem Chuck Winder, who was recently reelected. Um, he ran unopposed. Well done, sir. And we are going to be talking about on uh, KIDO 107.5 FM, 580 AM, and KLIX and Magic Valley. We're going to be talking, today's theme is uh, like an election, like what happened? So we're talking about kind of the post-game analysis. And one of the topics, um, Senator, is um, well, let, let's talk about this first, then we'll get into some of the priorities you see going forward in terms of, of uh, legislation. But there was a, uh, an amendment, a constitutional amendment on the ballot, which, which did indeed pass by a slim margin. And maybe you can remind people of what that constitutional was. It was whopping uh, 4%. Pardon? <laughs> it was a whopping 4%. Okay, I, 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 maybe I misspoke, but it, it, no, it, didn't, didn't. Uh, it wasn't overwhelming, right? It wasn't no, like it the was. other one was 80-20. Um, right. But let's talk about that constitutional amendment and what it, what it does, and I imagine that you are pleased that it did pass. Yeah, I am very pleased it passed, and uh, people really, I think, opposed it. Uh, were misled by some of the uh, information that was given out. Uh, it said it would establish a uh, full-time legislature, uh, right now, there's no constitutional prohibition in the Idaho Constitution that would not allow the House and the Senate to go all year long. So what this actually does is it allows the Senate and the House to call itself back together when 60 percent of its members can agree upon the subject matter, uh, really under extraordinary circumstances. Uh, the pandemic would have been one of those. Uh, the uh, ARPA money that we received, a billion dollars that uh, we really didn't get much say about. Uh, and to me, it's really about a constitutional issue of balance of power. Uh, right. We're supposed to be three equal branches of government. Uh, we were at a significant disadvantage in the Idaho legislature. We were on a, one of only 14 states that had no ability to call itself uh, back into session. And really, you were at the mercy of the executive branch, the governor in our case, uh, to call us back when he wanted to and what subject matters we could cover. Just didn't seem fair to me. Well, Senator, let's let's turn. Thank you for uh, explaining that. And 
So let's turn to some of the issues that you might see coming to the floor next year um, with a with a, a sizable surplus still, and with a likelihood that we'll do continue to do well as a state. Um, knowing that we've got a lot of resources, property taxes, grocery taxes, school funding, all the issues that seem to come up every year, uh, given what you know now and given the composition of the Senate, as you see it, how do you see those three issues um, being dealt with, property taxes, grocery tax, and school funding? You know, I don't know exactly how they're going to be dealt with, but I know they're going to be brought up. Uh, you know, I think when uh, people look at grocery tax, they say, is this really a fair tax or not? Uh, the way our uh, credit works in the state of Idaho, the citizens of Idaho are ahead uh, because of the credit they receive. All they have to do is file a tax return to, to get the credit. Uh, they don't even have to pay taxes to uh, to get the credit back because they, they bought groceries. Uh, and then it still taxes the people from out of state. Uh, the property tax issue, we've been uh, fussing around with that for two or three sessions now. I'm being told that... Uh, Senator Grow and some others, uh, Mike Moyle from the House, have been working on a property tax relief bill that they think is uh, going to be something that uh, would get good, broad support. And so that'll come up, uh, hopefully, fairly early in the session, maybe in the first couple of weeks. Uh, we've got to clean up the circuit breaker, breaker problem we created. Uh, last year, there was no intent to uh, take people off the circuit breaker. So I think that's uh, important that we deal with that. Um, and then as far as school funding, it's always been a high priority of our current governor and our past governors to fund education. Uh, but there are going to be some new challenges this year for federal dollars and state dollars because of a Supreme Court ruling that basically says it's okay if you uh, – and so you're going to see more pressure, I think, towards that. Idaho doesn't have a lot of private schools, but they do have some. Uh, that could be an impact. You've heard discussion about in the past about vouchers. I don't think it'll be called that, but uh, maybe it's money follows the student or whatever it is. But that's going to come up again. That'll be a big issue during the session. Uh, Senator Chuck Winder visiting with us here on Keep Idaho Red Radio. And, uh, Senator, let's let's talk a little bit more about education um, and appreciate the thoughts that you have shared. We've got a new state superintendent. That's going to change the dynamics a bit. Uh, you've, uh, uh, and, and also you had a one day special session where hundreds of millions of dollars were earmarked for education, but it was left to the next legislature to decide how to spend that. So you've got that 400 plus million plus the budget you're going to create for next year. And you have a surplus on top of that. So when you look at, uh, at, at education, um, w- uh, you, you mentioned a few things, but more, more specifically, the, the, the 400 and some odd million dollars, uh, what are some thoughts about uh, uh, priorities with that? Well, I think some of it will go to career technical education. I think some of it will go to uh, uh, K through 12 and probably uh, some to higher education. Uh, I don't know exactly how it'll be used. That's up to the public to testify and our committees to decide, and make recommendations on uh, legislation and appropriation of that money. Uh, but I know that uh, education is a real high priority in our state and about 62% of our entire budget goes to fund education. So you're going to see a lot of attention given to it, but you're also going to see us have the ability to take up uh, issues like the grocery tax, whether there's a way to do that better, to uh, get rid of it, um, eliminate the credit. Uh, a lot of people say, well, we want to get rid of the grocery tax, but they want to keep the credit. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So I think we're going to have to deal with that uh, in a very positive way and, and an open way and, and come up with some solutions. So more more funding. We have great ability to do some similar things we've done in the past, uh, lower taxes and lower tax rates, and, and uh, maybe even do some rebates and yet still fund those uh, needed uh, one-time thing that uh, the state needs. If you're just joining us, uh, we're on Keep Idaho Red Radio on KIDO and KLIX. We're speaking with Senate Pro Tem Chuck Winder, recently reelected. Senator, uh, there's been a lot of outrage throughout the nation about uh, school boards, how parents feel like they're being cut out of the process. There's uh, protests about what's in the libraries, what's being taught in class, what's, uh, you know, agendas, 
Could you talk a little bit about how you see maybe some of the social issues, um, um, well, how they'll be dealt with in the legislature in 2023, what you'd like to see there? Well, I think, you know, they're, the social issues are going to be front and center uh, for lots of different reasons. Some of the new people coming in are very passionate about uh, abortion issues, about uh, pornography issues uh, in our schools or public libraries. So that's going to come up. Um, I don't know the solutions yet. I think whatever comes up, hopefully it'll be uh, reasonable and, and uh, make sense to the public. But uh, those are all going to come up, and uh, people are concerned about uh, – you know what's going on in their communities and want to protect their kids and so those are all valid issues that we're going to have to discuss and senator winder obviously in idaho uh, again a report just came out recently we're number one in terms of economic growth and uh, economic index strength and that obviously means that we've had a lot of people moving here and so how do you see the legislature dealing with some of the issues of growth and we have about a minute and a half in our segment okay well, growth is a big issue. It's typically handled at the local level with planning and zoning and other services that are needed. Uh, that all ties back to property taxes. How do you handle the growth and not strangle your local governments from uh, being able to meet the needs of their local citizens for roads and fire and police protection and EMTs, all that? So there's a real balancing. There's a real uh, discussion that needs to take place with the locals. Uh but we also know that we've got to figure out some ways to get people, uh, particularly people that have lived here a long time, uh, have seen their property values accelerate at alarming rates uh, and their taxes go up so much. Uh, we've got to figure out some ways to deal with that. And so I think, you know, you're going to see a lot of effort. I think it's going to be one of the a challenging session uh, because a lot of new people have to learn a lot of new things, but they're also going to bring new ideas. And I think that's important. And, you know, I'm going to give them the full benefit of the doubt uh, and uh, provide that mechanism they need and the stability and leadership to uh, bring their ideas forward. Well, again, we thank you very much, uh, Senate Pro Tem Chuck Winder, for joining us here on Keep Idaho Red Radio as we kind of do a little bit of uh, post-game analysis on the elections and the impact of uh, the new members and what some of the legislation that we might see coming forward. And so we thank you again for joining us on Keep Idaho Red Radio, Senate Pro Tem Chuck Winder, and we'll be right back.